right, so this is what if Deku had the Ultimatrix part five, no, part four. Now, nah, guys, basically, at this video or tomorrow, because basically my upload, my upload time, I may only be uploading, I still will try to upload at least five or four or maybe even three what ifs this week and all other weeks, all, you know, all up until I find out another pretty much upload time now guys basically my upload time when on like you know after summer and all that other stuff is going to be like you know five um what was it? four what four what ifs um every week and one action figure comedy video and one stop motion but i missed my stop motion for this weekend and this week so i'm going to be uploading stop motion uh next week next weekend so yeah so guys let's get into it so basically, at this video, I'm going to be uploading What If Generator Rex Was In Young Justice, Part 1, because I got the request video. So I'm going to be doing that at tomorrow. And basically, um, since I'm going to be uploading a little bit later, like in the night times, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, probably I will be uploading on Friday. I probably will be uploading on Friday, but yeah. Any other than that, yeah. So basically... I will be uploading at least five or four days a week. And yeah, guys. So basically, tomorrow's tomorrow, watch out and look out for What If uh, Generator Rex was in Young Justice. I'm also going to be doing a new What If. What If, um, I think it was another What If. Can't think. Oh, What If Deku was a Greek Legend Part 3. I'm going to be uploading that on, on Wednesday. And on, uh, on Thursday, I'm going to be uploading... What if Deku had Mjolnir? So yeah, let's get to it, guys. So basically, we start our story off last time where Deku basically went on a date with, um, pretty much, uh, me, me Hatsume. Deku would have woken up that night and basically would have left me's house, telling her I'm into at school. Basically, I'm getting back to his house, getting ready, and basically getting back to school. Now he was a couple seconds late to school, so the you know pretty much. He was a couple seconds uh, before. It was basically two seconds before he was about to basically get marked as absent or late. So basically, Deku transformed into pretty much Jet Ray and flat, pretty much fled as fast as he possibly could, flying straight up into the classroom, t transforming into his human form, right, pretty much landing right in the chair perfectly and flawlessly. Basically, as out barely noticing. Now basically, they would have started their, their pretty much you know, tr their class, and basically they would have been explained on what they're gonna be doing today. Now basically, uh, part three was about the whole entire USJ event. So basically, for this to, for basically this, basically, basically what would happen is basically Deku would. Pretty much, they would spend a couple days, and they would be talking about the sports festival. Now, basically, over the course of a couple days, they would be talking about the sports festival, but Deku would be training his body physically in case he ever ran out of time, since Deku was still still on, you know, a slight time dampener, or a time limit. Now, Deku was training, and pretty much, he hit, his, he hit the Ultimatrix on a rock, or pretty much a wall in the penthouse where he was living with Jiro and Denki. Basically, Gerald and Deku were training on the top of the roof, basically training their quirks to the limits. Basically, waiting for Deku to train them a little bit more than just, you know, talking. Now, basically, Deku would be downstairs, about the, in the living room area, and he would see this Omnitrix switching left and right, saying that time, saying, in more of like a pretty much Alexa type voice, saying that, well, Omnitrix time limit disabled. Now basically Deku would be confused and pretty much look at the Omnitrix, pretty much, uh, Ultimatrix, sorry, basically getting really, you know, excited knowing that now the Ultimatrix time limit is is turned off. And basically Deku doesn't know yet, but basically um, at this point Ultimatrix would have the time limit, you know, turned off, but it would also uh, run on energy like the Alien Force Omnitrix. So basically, Deku at this point just thought he would have limited time with his alien transformations. Now basically, he would get ready and then he would start training them. 
They would start noticing after 10 minutes, after 11 or 13 minutes of training, Deku wasn't timing out. They asked him, and Deku told them that I found a way to turn off the time limit on the um, on the Ultimatrix. Now they would be training more and more over the course of a couple days, and eventually the was eventually the sports festival would run along. Now basically, Deku would get ready, and Deku would basically not be basically would have been well pretty much walking around. At this point, Deku would the day before the sports festival, Deku would be. Pretty much in the forest, training his quirk with training his quirk or training his power with basically multiple different transformations, transforming again and again over and over combo style. After he, after a couple days, found out he can use a slight of a master control. Now, Deku's master control is kind of weakened since he hasn't completely activated it. Basically, only thing he could he could transform into the four aliens at a time. Basically, him tra- he can transform back and forth only between two aliens. So the next alien he picks for his second transformation while he's already in his transformation, he, so sorry guys, I think I got it wrong. Yeah, I got it wrong. Basically, um, Deku has to transform back for a couple, for like one or two seconds then transform to another transformation. So he doesn't really have full on master control yet. Now basically Deku would get ready and would have gone into he would have gone, you know, was about to get ready for Yi Wei. A couple hours before, pretty much, you know, he was about to go to sleep for the next day. Deku would open his door and he would see some sort of green alien-like creature on the bed. He would talk to it and ask it, who are you? And the creature would explain himself as Azmuth, the creator of the, the pretty much uh, explain himself as Azmuth. And basically, Azmuth would tell Deku about the whole time how I tried to destroy the Ultimatrix and all the other stuff and Albedo and blah blah blah. Basically, him telling pretty much Deku in a matter of a couple, a matter of like uh, two hours or one and a half hours how and pretty much the outcome of the pretty much him telling him everything that happened in Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Basically, Deku would be very shocked by this and Deku would be pretty much told. Uh, Deku would be thinking that, you know, Asmuth wants the Omnitrix back. So, as, so Deku got in the fight and saying, say you're, never, you're not going to take this away from me. But Asmuth saying, I'm not trying to take it from you. I didn't even curate it. Basically, him explaining to Deku that I'm telling you, if you mess up or even try to destroy your universe, I'm going to have to, well, let's put it in this way, eliminate you. And basically, Asmuth uh, tells Deku that he was sent here by a couple of scientists on a Gavin Prime by a Dimension Teleporter to basically find the one uh, that was, you know, the user of the Ultimatrix and tell him pretty much the rules. Now, basically, Asmus will tell Deku three rules. Deku cannot tra- cannot mess with the fabric of reality or time too much to a point where he messes up different realities, timelines, and pretty much, um, well, bends light, bends the universe itself. Now basically, Deku withholds how you know Alien X and everything, since he does have all the transformations from Alien Force. Basically, Deku was still, you know, basically, you know, well, still have enough freedom to just change time in itself, but not really change time so much that it interferes with other dimensions and alternate realities, such as the Benton universe. Now basically, Pretty much Deku says, okay, what's the second rule? Asmuth explains to Deku that he cannot, you know, commit any mass, you know, murder or genocide on his universe. Or the Ultimatrix, it would send a pretty much an energy wave through the universe to destroy, to destroy only the energy that's, you know, frequenced towards the same energy that the Ultimatrix use. Basically, Deku would be confused, but he would go on with it. Basically, they would tell him more, and as we tell him the third rule, that Deku cannot, you know, pretty much do the same thing Omniverse Ben did with the whole time, you know, pretty much, well, well, pretty much reconstructing the whole entire universe. But basically, Deku would pretty much say I can agree with those rules. Basically, him, as I'm saying, okay, and as just leaving because as doesn't want to be in this universe anymore. As was left by, left by a green flashing light, and he was gone. Next day, Deku got ready for 
pretty much very UA for a sports festival. They could get ready and into a sports suit. Basically, the UA would have shown up. Pretty much, you know, the sports festival would have started. And basically, Deku would have gotten ready. And Deku would have gotten in a sports uniform. Basically, the Ultimatrix being on his wrist right here. Didn't have enough time to edit it on it. But yeah, so basically, they would have gotten ready. And they would have gotten started on pretty much, you know, well, the sports festival. Now, they would have started off with the same sports festival. Basically, them being in the waiting rooms. And then being told by their first, pretty much, well, course. Or pretty much, uh, pretty much task. A race all the way to the finish line using their quirks and any means necessary basically Deku would have seen this as a breeze since he had x-ray so he had jet ray so they would have started and basically Todoroki would have seen that Deku was incredibly strong and he could and he has a lot of fast he may have a lot of fast transformations so Todoroki went for Deku first and pretty much froze Deku's whole, whole pretty much his whole lower half pretty much letting everybody else pass by Deku Deku went for the ultimate matrix, basically transforming into. So Deku would see it would basically burn through the ice very quickly and would have boosted himself to the to the air like a cannon, basically or like a rocket, basically him flying through the air. And Deku would come to a halt where he got to the mountain area and he basically came to halt because he saw pretty much you know me. Or Hatsume basically going across with her tech, basically Deku being kind of, you know, well, impressed. So basically Deku flying towards her saying, what's up? Basically him having small talk with her, but him dodging a few attacks and Todoroki was throwing more ice attacks towards Deku, trying to keep Deku, trying to slow down Deku. Now Deku would have flown faster, basically seeing Todoroki using more of his ice, basically pushing Todoroki forwards, basically making a whole entire ice avalanche behind him. Now basically Deku would pretty much be melting right through the ice contracts, but he would see that he was slowing down because it was so much water and pretty much coldness over and over because Todoroki was pretty much keep on pitting, you know, every ice, you know, pretty much contract that pushed Todoroki farther. Todoroki made it colder and colder. So basically he blasts with Normal heat blast couldn't take that much, you know, stress and coldness. So you know, over time and keep on going full flame. So Deku transformed into an ultimate heat blast. Ultimate. If you don't, if you haven't seen part three, ultimate heat blast is basically just a bigger, badder, stronger evolution of heat blast. Basically, this war version of Heat Blast basically having the transformation to pretty much having the power to basically control and manipulate solar radiation to a point where he can literally mimic or pretty much go over the strength of the sun and pretty much burn a whole planet just by looking at it. So basically him being basically a fire god of some of sorts. Basically he blast started burning through the ice with no problem, like it was literally just snow. Him just looking at it, and him not even touching the ice, him just burning through it because pretty much his heat, he was boosting up his heat so much that pretty much six feet were pretty much the, was pretty much the, had like one fifth the heat of the sun. So he was burning through that ice quickly and proficiently. Now basically, eventually, he got to a point where he was right on the tail of Todoroki. He burned the ice avalanche on the side and gave him right to the side of Todoroki. Todoroki tried to push another ice cycle towards Tech, since towards uh, pretty much Deku, but Deku burned the ice cycle before he could even pretty much project out of Todoroki's hands and basically hit Todoroki with a fire blast so hot that it basically overpowered his immunity of fire on his other side, basically him being burnt or basically him being blasted out of the ground. Now. Basically, this is a little bit of, pretty much we're coming off a track a little bit, but I refuse to believe that Todoroki got burnt by boiling water, where he can literally reach temperatures over, like, like he can reach, he can get over endeavor levels of fame, pretty much flame, but boiling water burns him. I don't understand that, but yeah, whatever. So basically, Deku started flying towards him, and flying towards Bakugo, because Bakugo got you know, pretty much pretty far, and Deku just straight up just, like, I mean, chucked the fireball so big that it basically, compared to Bakugo, it looked like a whole entire planet. 
or just basically looked like a type of, well, looked like a, it was about the same size as a cannonball when he's rolled up. So basically, the fireball went right towards pretty much Bakugo. The fireball was about the same heat as Bakugo's explosion, so it just knocked Bakugo off course and made him fall to the ground. And he fell into some of the pretty much, uh, what was it? I think it was uh, pretty much fell into some of the, I think, I don't know what they're called. The pretty much bombs that are in the ground in that area. So that could start flying towards or through the t pretty much tunnel, eventually him getting in first place and Deku de-transforming for some reason. Now basically Deku would be confused on how to de-transform, but he would look at the Ellen Tricks and the Ellen Tricks saying in a sort of a Siri voice saying that power levels drained recharging. Now basically Deku would have came Deku pretty much through the, you know, pretty much of uh, the coin time, Deku would eventually come to a conclusion that basically, you know, he had to wait a couple minutes or basically it was a power timer, not just a timer now. But Deku did last a lot longer on his pretty much own without the time limit. Now basically, now basically Deku would have gotten already and would have gotten pretty much started basically about to, well, about to pretty much get ready for the next pretty much match they would be told that they're going to do basically a horse type of game and they would have gotten into their groups and Deku would still be an ultimate tra ultimate heat blast him picking that transformation first and him using his fire manipulation because pretty much this heat blast just has the power of the sun and basically is able it's pretty much the only downside to ultimate heat blast is that he's always like near like the temperature of the sun when he's not even trying to become hotter. Basically, if he, Ultimate Heat Blast goes literally all out to a point where it literally is being so hot, basically, what would happen is Earth would be completely just disintegrate. Like, it wouldn't be dust, it wouldn't be ashes, it wouldn't be nothing. It would just completely be gone. So basically, Deku would have been very careful with not going too overboard with Ultimate Heat Blast. Now, Deku would have transformed back into a normal alien. Deku would have transformed into, well, um, Ditto. So basically, Deku would transform into Ditto, and the color design would just be the same as Omniverse Ditto. And basically, Ditto would have gotten, Deku would have gotten ready, and he would have been on top, basically him being, you know, the headband wearer since he got first place. Now, basically, most people will be hesitant to go after Deku since Deku had so much power. And they see that how strong Deku was with his fire transformation. But when they saw him transform into the little transformation, Ditto, they thought nothing of it and just saw, thought that Deku picked a weak alien. So they thought they had a chance to pretty much just go after Deku and get deep in, in you know, the headband. So basically, they would start. Deku would have some headbands around his arms since he was so small. So basically, they would get ready and they would go around. Now, Deku would use his pretty much cloning abilities. To basically clone other parts of his body. The clone pretty much other clones. Now these clones didn't have the bananas on them. And pretty much, you know, you wait. Except allowed that because it wasn't the real Deku or the main Deku. Basically, Deku's clones or the other dittos would have been pretty much getting, pretty much, pretty much working like a human car. Basically them being on all fours and making the rest of the team pretty much, you know, land on top of them. And them using all of their strength to pretty much pedal them faster than the normal person could. You know, even walk. Basically, them just pedaling them forward. Now, Deku, they would Deku would try this tactic for a couple minutes, or about seventeen minutes. Basically, them getting around pretty quickly. But at this point, Deku's Ditto transformation was getting kind of tired, so Deku just you know, uh, transformed back into normal Deku. Deku looked at his Ultimatrix and basically saw opportunity. So Deku transformed into transformed into Chrome Stone. Him using his energy manipulation to basically blast himself into the air. And him basically, while he's in the air, basically using his manipulation to basically use his pretty much uh, powers to basically shoot multiple energy beams, blasts, and all other stuff. Basically burning, or basically not really burning, just blasting some other competitors off of their pretty much stance and them getting disqualified after them. After, you know, they fall. They fell. Deku using more of his manip energy manipulation to boost himself higher into the ground, not to fall down to the floor. 
and he was using more of his energy manipulation to get more and more points and take down more and more people. So Deku used more of his and pretty much more of his laser beams and multiple other stuff, and basically Deku would eventually, you know, run out of energy. Basically, Deku would have fell down to the ground. And basically, Deku would have looked around, seeing Bakugo see this, and Todoroki's team, pretty much them, pretty much, well, well, what was it? Pretty much driving, or, well, railing towards Deku. Basically, them trying to get the Deku faster to take his headband. Now, Deku would have seen this, and basically, since Deku was so high in the ground, he was falling so quickly, Deku was about to, well, break his neck, because he couldn't survive that fall. The Ultimatrix kicked in with the pretty much save the life function, and it also had that function as the Om the Omnitrix had it, and basically transformed Deku into an alien that could survive the fall or help him fly away from the fall, transforming him into normal heat blast and him flying away from the ground before he could touch it, him re transforming back into his team, and him using a little bit more of energy that was left over from the whole title saving life function, him transforming into. Pretty much, Ma pretty much, what was it, Magnet Man? I don't remember his name, but basically he would have used his magnet abilities, basically used the, the, pretty much would have, well, transformed into the ultimate version of this. He would transform into ultimate, pretty much, well, um, pretty much, I don't remember his name, but basically he would use his magnet abilities to basically magnetize the iron in pretty much his group's body and make them float up into the air. They would have told Ochaku to make them all float and they would have started to float. Deku would have used his magnet abilities to try to pretty much boost more of the gas pretty much in Mina's outfit to basically boost them farther. And they would have been they would have been flying around and eventually they would be flying around so high that pretty much they wouldn't be able to get them. But Todoroki would have used the last pretty much shawl and would have used his ice abilities to pretty much boost his whole team up into the Sky basically him using a lot of his pretty much power and pretty much him shooting an ice beam right at Deku's chest Deku not being fast enough to see it him being hit off of his team his team still flown up in the air But Deku falling down to the ground now basically the, the time would have ran out I mean, When Deku fell to the ground it, when Deku fell on the ground it wouldn't you know pretty much count and basically Deku would have de-transformed and that's how Deku basically you know won the won the last one now for the 1v1s that's where it's gonna get real good and basically we would have started basically with the 1v1s and basically we would have started with those now basically Deku would be in the waiting room basically waiting for well the next thing now they would have gone to the stands and they would have been told basically about Pretty much how it's gonna need to go down. They now basically they would have gotten ready, and they would have started to basically get ready for the whole entire well fighting. Now basically, Deku would have gone up get against uh I think it was um Ashiro or um uh, Ashiro. No, that's not his name. But the pretty much the mind control court guy. Now basically, Deku would have gone up against him. Him transforming into Deku would transform into a new alien on an accident, transforming into Moose Tracks. Now Moose Tracks would basically have all the abilities of a moose, with his horns basically being the same density or strength as titanium, and his basically him having the same amount of strength as forearms. Forearms being you know pretty strong. Now Deku having um, the speed of a moose, and also pretty much the senses of a moose as well. On top of that, him also being able to speak, you know, human in his form, and him also pretty much his hooves and pretty much, you know, whatever this part is, basically his nails would basically be pretty much a, pretty much, what was it, about the same, you know, strength as titanium, just like his horns, but it's pretty much horns being a little bit more denser and being a lot more stronger about the same strength as well alien x's body and basically these horns would be very very strong but they will be able to be broken by i don't know vilgax or if somebody is as like somebody as strong as a celestial grab them and try to snap them it would you know snap 
But basically, if a if moose track species lost their horns, they could regrow their horns in about a couple of months. Now, basically, uh, Deku would have gotten ready, and he would have started to go in the fighting stance, seeing that this guy was pretty big. Pretty much, you know, coming to the conclusion that this guy probably has some sort of super strength. Now, basically, Deku would have ran towards pretty much a Shinso as soon as the match started running straight towards Shinso with his increased speed. Basically, him using his strength as well, since he had the same, about the same strength as forearms, just a little bit, like, 1% weaker. But pretty much being, pretty much making up for that, for durability. And basically, he would have gone for a punch, and basically, Senshi would have dodged it, trying to talk to Deku. But Deku being told earlier from, pretty much the, what was it, pretty much earlier from the whole entire training about the whole entire, about Shinso's quirk. Now, Shinso would have been dodging more attacks, basically trying to get Deku's attention. But Shinso, Shinso seeing nothing was working, him trying to fight Deku one-on-one. -on -one, punching him in the ribs, pretty much the back of his legs, and multiple other things. Now, basically, Shinso would have seen this nothing working because pretty much Mo Moose Track's skin or huff was pretty strong. About the same, not like as strong as a really, really thick, pretty much. Pretty much about the same strength as a bulletproof vest. Uh, basically, it being still being able to get stabbed through or whatever, but punches, kicks, and also bullets wouldn't really work on Mo Moose Tracks' skin. And basically, Moose Track would have grabbed Shinso by the head, or no, not from the head, from the shoulder, and would have said, Sorry, buddy. And would have pretty much just chucked him out of the ring. And basically, Shinso would have fell down to the ring and basically would have gotten up. Basically, him being super angry on how he couldn't use his ability. Basically, the other pretty much contestants were seeing this, but basically, Deku saw this as well and said about what about a rematch. And they would see this as mm, okay, and they would have let Deku have a rematch. They would have gone up again, and Deku would have purposely talked to give Shinto a type, pretty much, you know, time to control him. Shinto would have told Deku to walk out, but Deku's, Deku would have stopped basically, Moose. Pretty much, uh, Moose tracks his horns, being pretty heavy, paying constant strain on pretty much the shoulders of Moose Track. But it would be helped with, because Moose, Moose, um, Moose tracks his skin or body, where it's built, helped him with the whole tired pain thing. The pain went away for, after a couple minutes, pretty much each time he ever used his horns really badly, like, stop a bus or something with him. And basically... He would have just, you know, tripped as he was walking, and basically, he would have been snapped out of it by the pain. Now, he would have gotten up and would have ran towards the Shinso, and would have punched him at the ring. Now, Shinso would have been knocked out, but pretty much, they would be able to see Shinso's abilities, but, you know, pretty much having the same type of, you know, pretty much, well, law, pretty much backlash as the last, as the cannon fight. And basically, Deku, for the next match, would have still been... Or still gone with Moose Track, basically seeing him as a pretty good transformation, and him going up against an extra fight up against Dinky actually. Deku would have gone to the fight and would have told Dinky that you're gonna be in it, in it for now, and be in it now, basically him getting into a fighting stance. And then about the fight, and Dinky saying, "Sorry, Deku, but I need to win." Basically, him shooting a huge bolt of lightning towards Deku. Now, since Dinky had more basically training, his lightning abilities were more accurate and he actually could half the time make accurate bolts of lightning towards villains or pretty much of uh, targets now basically deck would have dodged more attacks left and right him basically dodging more and more attacks over and over and over again and he shocked once and it hurting 10 times worse than normal humans electricity would have worked because his horns have the same type of strength and density as like as titanium Pretty much him conducting, con, pretty much con, conducting more electricity as he was shocked. He would have fell out to the ground, but he would have gotten back up very quickly. He was in his strength to pretty much punch the ground, making some sort of shock wave to pretty much, well, kick, sh kick Shinso off of his feet. I mean, kick Dinky off of his feet, fall, making Dinky fall to the ground and hit his head on the ground. He would have hit his head and he would get knocked out. And Dinky would go to the Recovery girl, he will be fine. Now for pretty much the last, the next round, Toyo versus Deku. 
between Deku and Todoroki's, well, fight or match. Deku halfway between Deku halfway to the waiting room would have seen that this fight is probably gonna last pretty long since uh, Todoroki is a pretty strong ice user, and on top of that, Deku Deku's transformation that's been able to beat him over and over and over has been ultimate heat blast. But Deku doesn't want to be a spawner and just pick him over and over again. But Deku doesn't want to just rely on ultimate heat blast too much. Because what if Deku doesn't get him and gets a random alien? So De Deku basically asks Mi for some help. So Mi helps Deku with some of her pretty much hero gear. And basically Deku gets ready. And basically Deku gets into the same outfit as this. Just without the bandana. Well, the still the bandana, but with the Omnitrix logo on the center of it. And, it's being, and, the, pa and the base of the bandana being a, darkest green, a darker green than his hair. Than his hair. Now for the for this, this would be a jetpack to help Deku navigate through the air if he ever detransformed as he was flying or he, as he was jumping in the air. Also, he had some sort of detonator in his hand. This detonator would be able to basically, well, detonate the uh was pretty much overpower if you press the button twice, basically being able to boost the jetpack to like like turbo levels of speed or if he clicked it once basically making the jetpack explode in the last in the next 15 in the last five seconds so Deku could use it as a distraction or a pretty much a division or a pretty much a well well uh an eye taker now basically now basically Deku would get ready and basically they uh Deku would have gotten ready for basically um, oh, Deku would have gotten ready for the match of his life, or one of the matches of his life. Him being super pumped to take down Bakugo after him seeing Oshaku game completely just being the snot out of. Because he, he still, he had feelings for Oshaku, but it's, now he is dating Mina, or me, or Hatsume, so basically... Deku would have gotten ready, and they and he would have gotten into the match. Now they would have started the match, and Todoroki would have started off with just a huge ice at pillar, basically trying to freeze Deku in it. Deku would have gotten out of the way, pretty much blasting out of the way, basically, and not really caring for the Todoroki's whole entire side of the thing. Basically, more or less, Todoroki, Todoroki seeing Deku wasn't transforming yet. Todoroki even got an angry, she was more. Ice beams more left and right. Eventually, Todoroki asking as Deku was on top of one of his ice pillars, like Spider Man style. Basically, Todoroki asking, Why are you not transforming? Am I not an am I not worth it? Basically, Deku saying, I'm not finding you on my full power if you're not finding me on your full power, Todoroki. This is sort of endeavor. Are you supposed to, aren't you supposed to be stronger than this? It's pathetic, really. Basically, Todoroki getting more angry, machining more. Ice Beam saying yes, he's not my father. At least I don't want him to be. Basically him using more of his ice pillars more erratically and way more, well, weirdly making ice constructs with icicles. Basically the icicles being so sharp to a point where it could, you know, completely impel somebody. That could be kind of scared at this point, seeing a lot of icicles getting so close to cutting him and also stabbing him. Or like just impaling him. So Deku would see this as a opportunity. Now Deku would get into his fighting stance and basically would have looked at pretty much uh, Todoroki. Basically Deku saying, Todoroki, if you really don't, if you don't want to win, if you want to win, why are you not using your full power? It's pathetic how I really think anybody could ever lose against you. When you don't even you use your full power, you're weak. You're pathetic and you're stupid to think that some quirk you get from your father genetically is his quirk. It's yours, not his. Tell me. Basically, Deku, you know, basically cussing and cussing out Todoroki, saying like he's a stupid idiot for thinking that pretty much, you know, a genetic trait is his father's. Basically, Todoroki gets angry at this. But also uses his fire abilities and gets his whole entire, you know, 
edge of character development, just a different way. Him being tried by anger, and pretty much him using his fire powers and using his awakening move to blast towards Deku. Deku grabs the Ultimatrix, transforming into Chroma Stone, him being able to take some of the, the heat, basically him basically fall, being buried into the ground of the pretty much training thing. Now, basically, Deku would have came out of the pretty much indent that was on the ground when he when blasted down by the awakening move, or pretty much Todoroki's awakening move, basically, pretty much Todoroki looking up and seeing Deku get up in the ashes, seeing Kumsun's form being kind of dir dirty or rust dirty and cracked, but Tur and pretty much Chromestone limping, and Deku saying that's pretty strong. And basically, Deku shooting an energy beam straight at Todoroki's chest, knocking him out of the ring. Uh, basically, basically, Deku would have won. Now basically, for the next match, this would be the t match of Deku's life. And this would be Bakugo, his tormentor, up against him. Now since Bakugo had won for all, Bakugo won... No, basically all of his, um, all for one, oh, was it one for all, yeah, one for all, basically, um, Bakugo was very more stronger, and he did win most of the matches Bakugo was all in, him basically more or less defeating Ochaku more brutally and actually breaking some of her bones, actually, since he used a lot more strength, and basically, Bakugo would have gone to a fighting stance with Deku, and they would have started the match. Deku would have been, they would have been circling around, kind of like a boxing match. Them circling around each other, and basically, them starting to fight. Bakugo charging towards Deku first, and Deku dodging some of the attacks. And Deku still being, still having the same gear that he had originally. Deku just using his gear to run around more and more. Deku dodging out of the way more frequently. Trying to get out of the way of Bakugo's explosions and his one for all full counting type of attacks and punches and his win his win manipulation punches and kicks, basically Deku dodging more kicks, but him being stuttered with more of them over and over time, basically Deku being barraged by attacks over attacks over attacks, basically Deku being able to basically get knocked. Only getting knocked out. Now Deku would use a jetpack to fly himself back into the ring before he fell out the ring, and basically would have flowed right towards the Bakugo. Him pretty much detaching from the pretty much jetpack, and him grabbing the detonator and blowing it up in Bakugo's face. Bakugo would have used some of his powers, basically cushion the explosion, using one using pretty much one uh, one for all. To basically use some of his strength in his face to try to dodge some of to try to take some of the pain away. But him still getting blown up in the face. Now the explosion wasn't big. It was at the, about the same as about the same as Bakugo's cannon explosions. Like the same explosion that Bakugo used to scorch Deku's book. Now Deku would have Bakugo would have fell into the ground. Basically him getting up and basically him saying you're you're dead, Deku. Basically him shooting a one for all full cowling, I mean like nuclear powered explosion with one hand towards Deku. And Deku dodging the attack, but slightly getting his his legs still in the range and his his whole entire you know shoe and pretty much uh, pretty much knee down were completely scorched off and his foot was basically burnt like third degree burns. So basically Deku was almost blown out the ring, about two inches away from the ledge. Bakugo put his foot on Deku's chest, saying that's it for you. Basically, Bakugo doing another nuclear explosion towards Deku's face. And Deku seeing this as the last opportunity. Basically, Deku seeing that Bakugo was about to shoot off a really big explosion in my face. Him knowing that well, he might, he will die if he Bakugo through the same explosion that he did on his foot on his face. Now basically the Ultimatrix would have seen this and would have kicked in the saving, you know, the user pretty much program, pretty much transforming Deku into an alien, a new alien. So basically pretty much Deku would transform into Shock Rock. Him using his energy manipulation to 
pretty much blast Bakugo off of them. Now, they would have looked at each other, and they would have ran towards each other at full blast, but the match would have been stopped because they would have seen that Shock, Shock Rock looked very powerful, and Shock Rock was about the same size as All Might, but just a little bit more anime-like esque muscular. Like, way more muscular than All Might, and about the same size as All Might. The exact same size as All Might, muscled up. Basically, Bakugo, looking at Bakugo, seeing that Bakugo was glowing since he was using a lot of all for one in his body. Now, basically, they stopped the match being a pillow right between them, but they were both punching, throwing a punch at the same time, then blasting through the rock and pretty much making a huge energy explosion. Basically, them being bla both of them being blasted out of the ring. It would have gone stone slow motion, seeing Bakugo got blasted out of the ring first, or pretty much was blasted quicker out of the ring. Now, basically, well, Bakugo would have lost and Deku would have gotten in the first place. Bakugo would have been angry at this and basically would have still been, you know, kind of locked up still since he was, you know, super angry at this. Now, basically, Deku would have gotten in first place and Deku would have gone to the Ultimatrix seeing that this new transformation was very strong. Him going on the Ultimatrix, looking up, and pretty much after the, you know, pretty much sports festival, they would have gotten, you know, Deku would have gotten cheered and Deku would also, you know, meet up with... With Hatsume. Now basically he would have asked Hatsume for a little bit of help. And Hatsume would have took Deku to basically her house. To basically her like basement. Not really basement. Like her garage slash basement type of thing. Basically showing pretty much Deku. Uh, pretty much helping Deku with his new transformation. Now Deku would have trained with his new two transformations. Moose Track. And also Shock Rock, basically him using his energy manipulation and also the whole entire Shock Rock abilities and, you know, pretty much decent power set. Basically him, you know, using his energy and his power pretty good. Him pretty much being tested on how strong Shock Rock is, saying that Shock Rock is a really powerful man energy manipulator. Also, that could find out that he can make energy constructs with Shock Rock, like swords, hammers, and also other stuff. And basically... Deku would have checked out the extreme, pretty much, power that Shock Rock has. See that Shock Rock's strength was incredibly strong. Well, not, it is incredibly strong, but it's pretty strong. Now, Deku would have trained for like at least like one day. Him getting the basics of Shock Rock's abilities and also Mo Moose Track's abilities. Moose Track being more easier since Moose Track had more of a base power, just super strength. A durability and basically sen increased senses as a, of a moose and the speed of a moose. Now, basically, if you don't know, moose are run like moose are pretty fast. There you go, guys. That's how fast a moose is. So, guys, basically, I'm going to leave it off here. Now, part five will be about you know the whole entire train thing and then being ready for the pretty much uh training camp and everything so tomorrow guys i'm going to be uploading world generator rex was in young justice and basically i'm also going to be uploading uh a stop motion actually on probably i'm probably going to be able to upload a stop motion maybe on friday night or maybe pretty much in the afternoon of saturday so yeah basically it's good basically guys see you guys later uh, See you guys later. Bye. This is as always, guys. Have a blessed day.